Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texarkana down to the coast and Dallas down to Houston and everything in between, we are E-T-X Ross! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another brand new episode of the ETX Rock Show with yours truly, Boston Chris. Guys, we are super excited about our guest today. Um, We're actually talking on the phone uh, with a very, very uh, good up-and-coming Texas country star. Um, And just this year, in 2016, he was named the Rising Star of the Year for the Country Music Association of Texas. Uh, For three years in a row, in 2013, 2014, and 2015, he he was a nominee for Country Male Artist of the Year at the International Music and Entertainment Association. He was also nominated for Country Album and Songwriter of the Year in 2015 at those same awards. Uh, In 2014, he was nominated as Rising Star at the Texas Music Awards. His most recent single, which is titled Hellbent on Loving You, spent seven weeks on the Music Row Country Breakout charts out of Nashville. His single One More Drink reached number one on the top 40 international country music charts and number 39 on the New Music Weekly chart. His debut single called Getting Back to Country made it to number one on the fan voted chart and he was the very first Texas artist to do so on that chart since the chart's inception in 1998. Uh, Getting Back to Country also peaked at number 24 on the Texas Regional Radio Report, number 26 on the Texas Music Chart, and number 13 on the International Country Chart. We're really excited and thankful for Cody Joe Hodges to come on the uh, ETX Rock Show. This is episode number 86, and we'll get to our phone call with Cody Joe Hodges right now. All right, guys. So we are we're, we've got uh, Cody Joe Hodges on the phone. This is episode eighty six of the ETX Rock Show. Cody, man, I just want to really thank you a lot for coming on the show, and I owe this interview to uh, Fat Matt with KYKX, who uh, let me know I, about I, you, and I'm a huge fan now. So, <laughs> hey, thank you so very much, man. Yeah, Matt Matt's done a done a lot of really good things for a lot of folks in East Texas. Uh, you know, we uh, we get to. We get to come there. Oh, I'd say about maybe once a quarter. You know, somewhere over there. Uh, I think in February we're going to be in, in close to Palestine uh, at, at a place called the Rusty Cactus. You nice. Know? But, yeah. But uh, it's it's been great, man. Just just been been uh, running the roads like a crazy man this past year. Just trying to trying to go out and just meet people and you know figure out what I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's true. And I mean, which part of Texas do you call home? Uh, call it station area, man. I was born in Bryan, went to school in Caldwell, uh, ended up going to Texas A and M, and then after I graduated uh, A and M, I moved to uh, to Nashville for a little bit and uh, stayed there. Stayed there for a little while. I lived with a fellow by the name of Jay Andrews. He uh, played steel guitar for Johnny Paycheck, and and uh, you know he taught me a bunch of stuff I didn't know I didn't know, <laughs> you know, and, uh... about the music business and just about just just music in general. You know, well, I've been listening to your stuff here for the the last couple of weeks, getting ready for this interview. And I mean, I've, I'm, I'm a huge fan of traditional country music. And anybody who's listened to my show knows that I'm very outspoken about the fact that I love traditional country music. Um, now, your musical style has been described as outlaw country. Would How would you describe your own personal style? Oh, man, I, I, that's a good question. I, I'd say I'm definitely one of the new traditionalists. Uh, you know, who you know, just a fella who appreciates a uh, good sound of country music. You know the way it, you know the way it kind of used to be. Uh, you know, ha- however, I do understand in this modern day uh, that that we we do need to to keep moving forward. You know, so so I, I try to put a little bit of modernism into my music. Along, okay, thank you so very, so, thank you so very much, man. It, it uh, and I tell you what, I, I can't take all the credit though, man. I've got a I've got a great wife you know, behind me and she's, you know, she does a lot of songwriting with me and, and, uh, she, she likes that old school country too. So man, I, I found me a girl who, who, who likes old school country and I love that. <laughs> so, and uh, you guys do a lot of co-writing together too, right? Yeah, we do. We do. And, uh, we actually just spend a lot of time period together. She, she, you know, she manages me right now. Uh, you know, we're, we've been, uh, we've been looking into to actually getting a music manager, you know, and switching her to just my personal manager. Right. You know, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it, everything takes time and, uh, 
I left my full-time job of being a power lineman in 2013, uh, March of 2013. And, uh, man, we just just uh, started figuring out, you know, what we needed to do. Uh, I released my first uh, single to country radio in, in November of 2014. And, uh, you know, it's just... It's just been been one trip after another, and and I don't believe we stopped since that first single's been released. And I, I definitely want to make note of that single too. That was called uh, "Going Back to Country," or "Getting yeah. Back Getting Back to Country," rather. And um, yeah, yeah. for you guys out there that have not heard this song, um, it, it kind of pays homage to the greats of country music. It mentions it mentions people like uh, Merle Haggard and Johnny Cash, Tanya Tucker, Loretta Lynn. So. Um, in the process of writing that song, especially being your first single, um, do you feel like you were kind of coming on the scene and making a statement right from the get go? Yeah, man. Uh, just you know, I mean, I, I'm I'm always going to be country, you know. Uh, uh, and I, and I feel that when you turn on the radio nowadays, it's like sometimes you don't know if you're listening to a country station or if it's like a pop station or a you right. know, sometimes even you know, even like a hip hop station, you know? So. Exactly. And I mean, this song and being your debut single, it was very well received, especially in the state of Texas. But, um, it, I think it peaked number 24 on the Texas regional radio report, which for a debut single is unbelievable. So congratulations have, on that. Oh, hey, thank you very much. You know, we, we've been trying to, trying to just figure out where we need to be as far as in the market. You know, uh, that, that was pretty, that song was pretty radical radically traditional <laughs> you know and so uh you know our, our our single after that was one more drink and uh and we kind of spiced it up a little bit and and uh you know put put a couple of could put a couple of rockets licks I, I i am a you know i i do love southern rock too you know so i love i love old school country i love southern rock uh blues you know uh you know just pr pretty much that kind of guy yeah, yeah, and uh, who would you say were some of your greatest influences growing up, and as far as music goes? Oh man, uh, well, there's there's there was a couple of bands, you know, back in the '80s, you know, around around the Brian Cox Station area that my parents would have us listening to to. But uh, you know, as far as mainstream country goes, I, I'd say folks like uh, you know, in, in, in that time, you heard heard a lot of like uh, I don't know, uh, Waylon Jennings, Johnny Cash, George Strait. Uh, you know, Alabama, um, you know, Jerry Jeff Walker, uh, I mean, just, you know, several, several folks like that. And of course, you know, around the turn of the millennium, you know, uh, I guess the late nineties, uh, you know, Texas music start get, getting really big. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and, you know, once I heard Pat Green and Crosby and Ragweed and, and, uh, of course, I, I like Green's older stuff, you know, just me personally, you know, but <laughs> that's, that's just me. But, uh, uh, man, it's just that, that's, that's kind of what got me started, you know, and, and, uh, it, it's been just a total adventure ever since I had my first gig in 2002. Uh, you know, I did, did, did a little bit of singing for the army and, uh, um, uh, and just, just, uh, did, did it mostly as a hobby until 2013. And then I started, I, I kind of sat down and I said, man, I got to get serious with this or, 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 or it's time for me just to, just to eat, just to put it away, and 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 you know, let let somebody else get serious about it. You know, yeah, and I just to make it From actually, from having read your bio too, it, it's um, you can kind of see over the transition of your life that you know you kind of dabble with the music, and you're kind of back and forth with the music, and you're doing other stuff in between. Um, do you do you think maybe were, were there any confidence issues involved with that, or, or was it more of just boredom or oh. what? Oh, I, I, well, yeah, there was a huge conflict, man. I, 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 I wasn't making any money, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, so I, after I got out of the army, well, I, I actually joined the army. I, I told you about moving up to the, moving up to the Nashville and mm -hmm. I stayed there for a little bit, you know, but I was probably having a little too much fun and, and decided to move on back home and, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, dad, you know, dad sit down and, and he had a talk with me. I think we we're going fishing, and all of a sudden, I just decided just to go ahead and join the army, you know, and get get away from it all. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, that's awesome too. I mean, so I mean, prior to joining the army, you 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 know, you'd already been in Nashville. You played a lot of different venues and things in in Nashville, and also worked on Broadway in Nashville too, which 
Um, yeah, yeah. That's, unbelievable. That was awesome. I, worked, uh, I worked Crossroads, Legends Corner, the stage. Uh, man, it was just it was just a lot of fun, you know. But but uh, it's a real cool story. Uh, and I joined up for, for the army, kind of get away from the music, you know. And and <laughs> I got to my got to one of my duty stations, Fort Carson, Colorado, and I was on a street corner playing music with a homeless man, and and uh, got picked up to to sing for the army, you know. So it it you just never know where this world's gonna gonna turn out. You and know? I was so, definitely gonna point that out too, where you know you you kind of join the army to take a break from music. And then, you know, your, your first duty station or whatever, you're performing music. And that's in a way, that's kind of how you get discovered. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you I know, mean, was, God works in mysterious ways, man. He always puts you on the path you're intended for, I think. Man, I'll tell you what, he, God sure does, man. And, and, and it's so, so awesome the, the way that God works, you know, and because it, a lot of times we, we, you know, it's, We'll be looking straight, and he'll be coming at us from from a different angle than what we even thought, you know, was was possible. And so, I mean, it it, it went basically. I was playing in, you know, garages and small little bars, you know, to to like. I mean, I'm, you know, I went and played for the army, and I mean, it's it's like we're playing to hundred thousand people at the Texas Motor Speedway, you know, right, right before a race, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah. Just like, I mean, it's it's just a total. I mean, it just it opened my eyes up to. To a, a level of musicianship uh, and and possibilities that I never knew was out there, man. My uh, my music director in the army had a had his doctorate, uh, you know, from Juilliard. Wow. Uh, you know, from music and physics, and it was just so cool to get to learn from some of them folks. Uh, and we we played, you know, like I said, NASCAR races, uh, you know, professional baseball games, uh, basketball arenas. You know, I mean, it's just uh, all kind of really cool stuff, but when it was my time to get out of the army, uh, you know, dad had dad had a talk with me. One of those talks, you know, that you get get from pops, and yeah, and uh, he said, "Son, I know you love music, but you need a job." You know, and so <laughs> it's, and so I, I guess that's when you ask me about going back and forth between music and you know and 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 kind of getting a little bit more serious about the music and then kind of taking a step back every once in a while. You know, it's, I guess it's that older person inside of my head that's always said, hey, son, you, you need to be responsible, you know? Right. So you're just struggling with that frustration of doing something you love but really not getting paid and, you know, not putting food on the table for doing what you love. Right, right, you know. And, and uh, you know, I, I did the power line business for about three years after I got out of the Army and, and um Man, I just uh, I just decided to go ahead, and in 2013 I decided to go ahead and go for it, man, and 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 to not look back, and and I still haven't looked back, you know, ever since. I mean, we've just been going forward. I mean, in the last two years, uh, you know, my, my band's played from uh, New York to California, you know. Of course, we're not on, a, you know, we're not on a big scale level yet, you know, and not not a, you know not even in Texas. I don't believe we're considered a you know a a Texas artist. I mean, not even. Probably not even be be artists, you know. But but hey, we're we're out there doing it, man. We got some really cool songs, uh, you know, the original songs, you know, stuff that that you're probably not gonna hear too many other folks singing right now. You know, hopefully in the hopefully in the next few years, you know, there might be some some younger artists who who uh, would you know be so proud to like cover my music, you know. But but right. uh, you know, it's 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 just one of those pro- processes, and and. Uh, you know, it's just fun kind of to see see where it's heading and, and uh, you know, what's around the corner. Well, first of all, on behalf of our listeners, I definitely want to thank you for your service in the Army. Um, my dad was a um, Vietnam veteran, did 20 years in the Army as well. So thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, military is, is, a, is a huge, huge thing in my wife's family, too. And, and uh I kind of joke about it sometimes that that if, if I had to join the army, I might not have even been married to her. So, uh, <laughs> well, her, you know. her, her, her her grandpa was played by John Wayne on the Green Berets. He he was the uh, fifth Special Forces commander out of uh, you know in, in Vietnam. Wow! In in the early stages, that's so. really cool. Yeah, so yeah. I, I know because of your time in the army and also being musically gifted and, and really, you know, you're breaking out on the Texas scene right now. You, you might not be A or B list or whatever you want to call it, but you are definitely making a name for yourself in the state of Texas. But um, 
your manager slash wife had told me that you uh, work with a, a charity called Operation Gratitude. And I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of this charity, so I definitely, in your words, I want to know what this charity is all about. Let us know. Yeah, man, it's it's just uh, it's just it's just kind of like paying it, you know, paying it forward, you know, just just uh, uh, just. I mean, I guess I guess the title is almost somewhat uh, somewhat uh, I guess self-explanatory, you know, Operation Gratitude, you know, just just. Uh, um, and there's so many other folks out there that, that, you know, aren't as, aren't as fortunate, you know, uh, and, and basically just, just helping folks out, man. And, and, and this is basically a charity for, uh, veterans, right? Uh, pr- pretty much. Yeah, pr- pretty much. So getting back to your music and, and so, I mean, at this point in time in 2013, you finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to take the leap and I'm going to try to make music my career. Um, was a, a big part of this step was, uh, kind of putting your faith into God. Was that part of it? Oh man, (laughs) that should be everybody's first step. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) You know, but, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Put, putting my faith into God. Uh, uh, there's been so many, there's been so many times that, that, uh, you know, I, I can look back at and, you know, think to myself that if I was, by myself and, and I'm truly alone in this world, man, uh, no good things probably happen. I don't know. I mean, you know, we're, we're trying to make great things happen, but, but it, it, it really takes a, uh, it, it takes a, almost like a God push sometimes to, to help you realize that, Hey, man, you're, you're, you're not on your, your own out here. I mean, there's, you, you, you know, God, God's everywhere. God's in your friends. God's in your family. You know, God's at the at the house and and uh, uh, you know, just just all, all around us, man. Just trying to trying to do His will and 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 also trying to trying to take care of yours too. Yeah, and then, like I said earlier, you know, if I was living your story, I would definitely be like, man, God has to be heavily involved in my life because every time I try to step away from music, something drags me back into it. And uh, I, I would definitely be like, man, that's something's got to be God. Right, right, right. So you started when you came back from Nashville. That's uh, I guess when you really decided to start your own your own band. Was that before or after you started with the lineman work? Oh man, uh, yeah. My, well, I was when I was in the army. About, about the end of it, I was in a uh, band called Rockin' Horse up there in Colorado, and uh, the the band actually won. Uh, one band of the year in Colorado back in 2008, you know, right, right. Uh, I guess right, right, right after I left, they, they got named the, the band of the year, you know, so that, that was really, really awesome for those guys. But re- really one of my first, you know, true, true bands, you know, that I've had, you know, and that I was the leader of and, and, and it, it was the Cody Hodges and the linemen. And, and we had, uh, we had four main guys and then, uh, uh, Dan Kachimba, Dan, Dan Kachimba on the drums, uh, 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 Matt Westwick on the bass, and then Tyler Gregg uh, on the guitar. And every once in a while, Steve Pelusic would set in with us on the steel guitar. I don't know if you've heard of Steve Pelusic, but man, he is a beast on a steel guitar, you know. And and uh, that that was actually my first, I guess, real kind of le- legit band. We we went in there and we kind of somewhat recorded a, a a project and and uh. <laughs> about the end of the project, you know, Matt and Matt and Tyler were about to graduate A and M and figured out that man, hey, would you know, it just wasn't wasn't making enough for the music to to really pursue it, you know, on a serious level, and 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 the band started kind of breaking up, and then all of a sudden Dan came down with uh, you know, with with prostate cancer, and and uh, mm. man, just just uh, <laughs> you know, it's it basically it, it it turned me into a solo country artist, and. And uh, ever since then, I've just kind of been that way. I've been been a solo country artist, and and uh, I've, I've just basically, uh, you know, had had several guys come and go, and uh, you know, just trying to trying to get get something steady. You know, uh, right. the last three years, I have had a fellow by the name of Andy Garcia out of Austin, and he plays the stand up bass. He's he's uh, it's pretty much pretty much almost played every show I've had you know, in the past three years and, and, 
you know, but we we got to figure out what we're going to do this next year because uh, J- Jamie and I, Jamie's my wife, by the way, and, right. and uh, you know, we're going to be spending a lot more time in Nashville and just figuring out what we need to do as far as, uh, you know, the business end is concerned because uh, we, you know, we're, we're playing a bunch. I mean, we've, we've got, I mean, we've, shoot, I think this year we played 150 shows. Wow. So, uh, but which which is which is great. Not all of those are band band shows. Some of them are you know solo acoustic duo trio type stuff. Too. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still a date. <laughs> yeah, after, <laughs> you know? yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, and that was yeah. all across the country too, right? Yes, yes, yeah, it was. So, so we've and we in fact the, one one of the coolest shows that we played. Uh, I think we were out in the middle of like a cornfield in Nebraska, and <laughs> and I had no idea, but uh uh. I, I would, you know, I was opening up for the Scott Brown band, you know, Scooter Brown band. Right, right. And uh, that 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 was really cool. It was, it was right outside of Omaha, and and it was cool just to see some of our Texas brothers out there on the road, and and uh, you know, doing what they do. I think he's he's been doing a lot of really cool stuff, you know, this past year, and and uh, he, he's out on the road with Charlie Daniels all the time. Uh, you know, I see on Facebook. So so uh, it, it, it's cool just to get out get out of the state and. And uh, you know, find find people that you knew, you know, from back back home in Texas, and you're just like, wow, you know, hey, we're man, we're 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 all doing this stuff out here, you know, and and I uh, I don't know if anybody's making any money, but but uh, right. man, we're sure having a lot of fun. <laughs> so, well, I, def- I definitely want to get back into your music. Um, you know, in 2014, you, you uh, teamed up with is it Layman Records? Yeah, uh, t- 2014, we teamed up with uh, Lamont Records out of Nashville. Right, Lamont. Uh, we we were actually. Thing. Yeah, we actually signed with uh, Tate Music Group out of Oklahoma City in December of 2013. And uh, 2014, I think it was February, we ended up signing with Lamont Records uh, and, and went ahead and put, put you know two projects out almost at the same time and uh, released one of them in 2014. And then we released, released the other one with Lamont Records in 2015. So, so we've just been pretty much working singles off of those two albums for the last two years and and uh you know it's, it's been a it's been a great learning learning process and and uh well i definitely know. wanted to talk more about uh, about the, the sound and the in your music uh especially with the uh, two singles that i really like also is uh one more drink and um hell bent on loving you and what i love about these songs again like i said earlier is the, the old timey traditional country feel of them but you know, I love hearing the auxiliary pieces of them, the, the pedal steel, the, the fiddle, and, and things like that. So when when you're sitting down to write these songs, or even during the process of recording them, um, are you trying to, you know, put those pieces in there to not just stay true to your roots, but also try to sound different from what Nashville is really trying to force feed everybody nowadays? Is there that strategy involved in it, or is it just something yeah, that you uh, like? A little bit. Yeah, you're 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 pretty much right on, Boston. Uh, you know, I mean, I when when I think of a song, you know, and and how how I, I think of it, you know, uh, at the beginning, sometimes it isn't always the way it turns out at the end. Right. Uh, you, you know, because it's all it's all a process, and anytime you get collaborating with somebody else, you know, they're gonna steer they're they're gonna steer the project, you know, their way. You got to pull it back your way. You, you know, so it's it, it's a constant tug and pull. Uh, you know, but, but I, I would have to say that, 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 uh, you know, my, my goal is to, uh, I, I always want to be considered country music. You know, I, I don't, I don't want any country listeners ever saying that, dude, this doesn't even sound like country music, you know, cause I'm a country guy, man. And I, I love country music and, and I, I want to keep country music, uh, you know, I, I want to keep country music. Maybe not where it was at, you know, but I mean, I want to keep it country, you know, right, and, and, right. and, uh, you know, so, sometimes I know Nashville has a way of, of, uh, you know, maybe being a little bit more progressive, you know, in, in the country field than I like, you know, but, but, uh, uh, I, I think at the end of the day, I, I sit down with those guys and, and, you know, I say, and, and of course, the, 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 uh, the president, the CEO uh, of, of the Lamont Records, is Dave Moody, and and uh, you know he he's a real big country guy. So I feel real confident, you know, putting some music out that that uh, you know that that people are going to 
say, oh, man, hey, this is this is closer to country music than anything we're hearing here in Nashville, you know? So, I, I mean, that, that, that's that's kind of where I want to be. I, I want to be... I want to be right there on the edge, but I, I want to be on the countryside uh, right. of the edge. And that you sounds know, like I, a huge blessing, too, to have somebody, you know, behind you that has that same passion for traditional country. So that way there's no pressure from you as an artist to kind of change the way you are. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And, you know, and then that's, that's, uh, and he, he knows, he knows I'm a country guy, man. If you, if you meet my family, <laughs> cause I, I had him, I, I took my family up to uh, up to Nashville, you know, for him to meet everybody before we decided to work with him. And I, and uh, of course, my dad, he's he's <laughs> some folks they listen to him talk and they're like, "What'd you say?" <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, that sounds like backwoods talk, you know. But but I mean, that's 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 where I come from, man. And 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 uh, you know, I I don't want I don't want any misres- misrepresentation. Uh, you know, when somebody listens to to my album, I mean, am, am I am I as hardcore outlaw country as you know as Cody Jenks or Jamie Johnson? You know, or, or I mean, the list goes on. You know, I mean, uh, Chris Stapleton, uh, uh, Sturgill Simpson. I mean, yep. You no, know, I'd, I'd say I'd say I'm, I'm probably not that radical. You know, but but I'm 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 somewhere in the middle but it's a little bit closer to those guys than it is like somebody like luke bryan or sam hunt or or uh you know florida georgia line or something like that yeah and the thing is you know the we've talked to a lot of traditional country artists um from all different walks of life on this show um from you know folks like gene watson and mo bandy you know to more localized people as well oh, uh, love, oh, I, said, I love love gene watson and, and mo bandy oh yeah me too man it was it was awesome talking to those guys but you know it, it's really cool to kind of see the struggle from somebody from that era that really loves their what their sound their traditional country sound and you know they're feeling all this pressure from nashville because nashville's not wanting that to be successful anymore for whatever reason I have no idea what that is, but it's just really refreshing to see people like, you know, um, Jamie Johnson and uh, Sturgill Simpson and Chris Stapleton come along and, and prove to the industry that this is still something out there that's marketable and that the fans still want to hear it. Um, Man, I, I know the fans still want to hear stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I, I travel all around the United States, you know, and I mean, everywhere we go, there's more people that like the old school country sound that I've met, uh, you know, than as opposed to, you know, to the, to the newer stuff. I mean, it, it might appeal, you know, stronger to, to, to teenagers and, and, you know, and, and maybe, you know, a few college kids, you know, but I think the large majority of folks, you know, do like some of that, you know, traditional sound to their modern day country music. Right. You know, um, then that's what I really kind of like about you. Like I said earlier in the show, you know, it's it's that. I mean, you can feel your roots in, in what you're doing, um, but you're also keeping things as modern as you possibly can. It's kind of like you said, you know, it's like being on that edge, but making sure you stay on the country side of the edge. That was a great a great quote. I like that a lot. Hey, thank you, man. I just I, I've never said that before, so that was off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I visualize things in my mind, and they just come out through my mouth, you know. And then, of course, a lot, a lot of times it's a lot better if, if uh, you know, I put it down on paper, you know. But right, but, uh, right. And that, that's one thing I love about these interviews is sometimes you just don't ever know what you're going to hear from Cody Joe. <laughs> that, well, that's true. <laughs> so we have a segment that we do on every show. It's called Rapid Fire, and ordinarily I'll let folks know about it before uh, we start the interview. But um, basically, what Rapid Fire is, it's just a, a, a quick. 10 questions um a lot of these questions will be like would you rather questions where you can pick one or the other um and some of them are serious some of them are funny um but we're going to do rapid fire with cody joe hodges are you ready cody absolutely all right so would you rather live in a live in a world with no problems or live in a world where you rule hang on live in a world with no problems or live in a world where i rule Yes. Oh Lord, have mercy. I guess ruling comes with problems, huh? <laughs> not, 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 not bad. I, 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 I wouldn't mind being the ruler of my own little world. Okay, cool. Okay, so would you rather have four million record sales or a sold-out fifty-city tour? Oh, dude, uh, man, a sold-out tour means you're selling records. So I, I, I'd, I'd say sold-out tour. 
All right, that's what I would pick too. All right, so if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh man, golly, dude! I, I'm I'm a huge. I, I grew up as an X Men fan. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, man, that's that's. Uh, I guess being, being able to fly would be kind of cool. Okay, cool. All right, so if you could listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'd say an old George Tate song. Okay, uh, Pizza Hut or Domino's? Uh, Pizza Hut. Would you rather always win but never play, or play but always lose? Play. <laughs> That's a hell of a question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love to win. You know, so, sometimes I, I, I hate to lose more than I love to win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, I don't know. I guess this. I mean, I, I always winning would be cool, but but uh, I don't mind losing either. So I would have to say I'd, I'd at least want to play. You know what I mean? Even I, if I, yeah. Even if I'm always losing, I would I would at least want to play, and I hate to lose yeah, too. To okay, so uh, Hakuna Matata or YOLO? <laughs> Hakuna Matata, definitely. Cool. All right. Would you rather listen to older music or today's music? Oh, older music. No, oh, I said just depending on who today's music was that that I was listening to. Right. <laughs> All right. Would you rather always be underdressed or always be overdressed? Ooh. Man, I'd say underdressed, but my wife, she'd say overdressed. Yeah, I, th I think we're probably on the same plane there, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you could see anyone in concert, dead or alive, who would it be? This is the last question. Ooh, uh, man, I, I would like to go back and, and uh, uh, be on stage again for a Merle Haggard show. Nice. Yeah, I've never gotten to see, I never got to see Merle, unfortunately. Yeah, man, I, I I got this, but I, I would I would like to see him like back in his prime. Like I, I saw him in two thousand six, uh, right up there at, at Renfro, Renfro Valley, Kentucky. But uh, but man, I tell you what, uh, golly, yeah, that that that'd be awesome to see him in his prime. You see, I got I, I feel the same way. I got to see George Jones not too long ago, and I would I would love to see him in his prime as well. Oh Again, yeah, you know. <laughs> Because honestly, he we saw him in Tyler. He really wasn't that great. I think he was, you know, probably pretty sick or something. Um, yeah, it was just yeah, really unfortunate. Right, right, and that, and that happens to them, you know, them older guys, you know, who are doing it, you know. But kind of like that song, "Who's Gonna Fear Their Shoes?" You yep. know, uh, uh, man, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be folks out there who, are, you know, and that's that's one of the reasons that that I wanted to do this serious and full time. Uh, man, because I I wanted to put my name in the hat for that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I I want to be one of those guys that that man. When you think of their name, you're like, oh, dude, hey, that's a guy who is doing it. You know, I mean, he mm -hmm. he done left his full time job. You know, I mean, he is finding out what it's all about. And of course, it's not always, you know, however you want to call it, roses <laughs> here. Oh, it's never <laughs> always, you know, it's never always. Um rainbows and roses you know sometimes you got to go through some crap along the way but you know personally i would like to thank you for trying to keep country music alive i can definitely see it in your music when i listen um so i mean and, 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 there's, no, and there's no no offense and no no i mean i don't look down on people who aren't doing that you know it's just that's how i want to do it you well, know, everybody's uh, everybody is is influenced differently when it comes to music anyway you know not everybody else has the same plan and, and goal in mind that you might have, you know, so. Right, um, right. And that's, that's what makes music great is, you know, everybody has their own kind of stamp on things and it doesn't make anybody wrong. It doesn't make anybody right. It just, it's what works for each, each, each artist, I think, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's got their, everybody's got their own, uh, you know, own way of doing things, and and uh, you know, I, I've even had people I play with, you know, who, you know, who, who tell me, man, dude, I, I just don't understand what you're doing right here, man. Like, you know, that they, they say, man, do, do that little lick again, or do that little part of the song. I'm just like, you know, so, sometimes it's just, you know, I, I wasn't really, uh, I guess I wasn't formally raised in, in, in music, you know, so so whatever I do, it's, it's half the stuff I just make up. 
<laughs> right. And I mean, you've been, so, I've, I've got one question for you because I think this could really go a long way for anybody that's listening that might be looking for some, you know, some music lessons along the way. You know, you've kind of, like we've talked about, you've kind of flip flopped back and forth between music and other things in your life. Have you had any regrets along the way? Is there anything you wish you could do differently? Man, I guess everything that I've done has gotten me to where I'm at right now. Even even the bad things, you know. Uh, there's probably a few times I would have I would have chose to drink less. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of us, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's those, there's a few opportunities that I had that that I might have blown an opportunity because of overconsumption of alcohol but but uh you know but it, it, in the big picture you know it just it just wasn't it just wasn't ready for me yet and and I wasn't ready for it you know so so uh, I I guess you know just like we went talking about God you know I mean God, God puts us all in the situations we need to be in you know for for a reason and and uh, sometimes we don't even know that reason until later on but but everybody's got a purpose right you know so, and so where can folks find Cody Joe Hodges' music, and where they, where can they find you on social media? Oh, man, that's easy. Uh, CodyJoeHodges.com. It's just my, my name, dot .com. Uh, and you can find find me on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Reverb Nation. I just looked on Reverb Nation the other day. It says, uh, apparently, I'm I'm number one for the region. I don't even know what that means, but, but uh, uh, I, I thought that was pretty cool because... Uh, you know, uh, thing there, there was a bunch of there was a bunch of uh, who I'd like to consider, you know, you know, Texas artists who are like a B or A level, you know, that that my name was ahead of theirs, I guess, on what kind of little polls that they have. I'm not even sure how they get those numbers. But, I think it's know. based on I think it's based on how many people actually click on your songs on there, and also how many people have uh, fanned you. I think it's like a fan list on there on Reverb. Oh, Nation. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I, I was actually looking at my schedule, and uh, and I'm I'm gonna be playing East Texas a few times, uh, you know, through March. Uh, we're playing the Drunken Mule, okay, uh, in, in March on yep. the uh, on the 17th of February. Cool. Uh, we're playing the uh, the Rusty Cactus in Oakwood, uh, the 18th of February, and then we are playing in in March. On the 18th of March, we're playing the Lone Star Ice House in Longview. Oh, I will definitely be at that show, I think, for sure. Oh, right on, man. Yeah, right yeah, on. That's right so, down the road from me, so I'll definitely yeah, take in that so, show. So, and I said earlier, we played it on the quarter, uh, play it about once in the quarter, but I guess it's a little bit more than once. You know, a quarter. So, well, I'm glad you're. I'm kind of glad you're coming through East Texas. Uh, it'll show folks around here who Cody Joe Hodges is. I think people will be very interested in you for sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and we're we're trying to uh, we're doing our best. I'm not, I'm not going to say we're trying because we're doing right. <laughs> you know, but uh, but we're burning burning trails. You know, from Austin to Nashville, and uh, and and just so happens that we've got to go through East Texas for each one of those trips. So, yeah, and that's so, completely okay with me for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so where can anyway. folks find a um, a Cody Joe Hodges CD? Man, well, if you can find a Cody Joe Hodges CD on Amazon dot com, uh, iTunes. Uh, of course, you can always go to the website. That's that's a that's a pretty cool place to get it. And uh, and just just uh, if for some reason you can't get it there, send me a message on Facebook. Uh, go to our artist page, just send us a message, and uh, and we'll make make sure we get one to you. All right, awesome, awesome. And um, where can folks find booking information to, to get you booked up for uh, a show? Booking information, go ahead, and, and, and I'm going to send you to the website for that, and, and I'll have the information on there uh, <laughs> at CodyJoeHodges.com. Uh, Man, it, there's, there's a couple of different people that do bookings, you know, for us, but my wife being one of them, and, and we just signed on with the uh, with with another guy out of, actually out of uh, I think I think they're out of the Dallas area so so that that's uh, really cool and hopefully it's going to open us up to a lot more opportunities. His name is Brooks Kendall and uh, man just just uh, just lo- looking forward to to uh, enlarging our territory and and uh, getting a little bit more Cody Joe Hodges music out to to Texas and the world so. 
So you guys, thank you for listening to another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. This is episode number 86 with Cody Joe Hodges. We're super excited that he came on. Thank you again, Cody. Hi, and thank you, ETX Rocks. And uh, guys out there, remember to keep on supporting local music and... ETX Rocks. Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texas, Canada down to the coast, and Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are E-T-X-Ross! <laughs> Hit the brakes! Cut!